Hi, and welcome back to the channel. If you're wanting to know how to upload a Python package to PyPy so that you can run pip install and have your library accessible anywhere in the world, then stick around for this video because I want to walk you through the five main steps in this process. I'll explain them very easily and expect no technical background. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a PyPy or the uh, Python package index account. And to do that, you're going to go to pypy.org. I'll link that in the description down below. And you're going to click register and create your account. Now I'm going to presume that you've paused the video right now and you're picking right back up just now with the account already made. So once you've made your account, you really need to follow on to step two, which is identify some kind of problem that you want to solve with some kind of Python library. Now I'm gonna use an example from a single function from another project I'm working on, and we're gonna create a separate library around that. The idea of this function is to be able to take in a map or a dictionary into a spacey pipeline. If you don't know anything about spacey, don't worry, I'm not covering that in this video. Um, this is just to show you essentially what we're going to be doing. The idea is to take different NER labels and automatically change them into something that a user might want. Now there's a couple of reasons to do this. One, the different models for different languages have different labels for things like person. For example, in the Spanish pipeline, we have PER. But in the English pipeline, we have person. In other instances, you might want to standardize things that are different types of entities, but part of the same category, such as lock and geopolitical entity. So we can see right here on the left-hand side, an example of this in progress. We've got LOC for Yellowstone Park and GPE for Wyoming, a state, a geopolitical entity. The goal of this pipeline is to take in the exact same text, but allow for a user to pass in a dictionary called a label map and change any instance where the key aligns with one label and assign it to something else. So in our case, this pipeline should go ahead and automatically change Yellowstone Park from LO, Wyoming from LOC, uh, from GPE into LOC. So once you've identified the problem that you want to solve, in my case, simply changing the entity label, it's time to take that function that you've developed and place it into a Python file. Again, this is not a video on Spacey, so I'm not going to explain any of this. Instead, we're gonna jump in to the main thing that you have to do, which is step three. And that's gonna be creating your uh, essentially package setup or your file direct or your package directory and also creating the essential files. Now, not only do you have to have all of your stuff in a Python file, all of your functions and classes, you need to actually structure your, uh, your library in a very systematic way, a way in which PyPy will expect it, and a way in which setup.py will actually expect it. And we'll approach both of those in turn. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to have a directory that is set up where the library name is going to be in one folder. In this case, I'm calling it label underscore mapper. And inside of here, we're gonna have two mandatory files. One is gonna be the file in which your Python classes sit. These could be your classes, your functions. It's important here to not have any print statements, use things like logging and stuff like that. But for right now, we just have one simple function. Now, the other thing that you have to have in this directory is something that's called your init file. And this is your underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot pi. This is a special kind of Python file that is gonna be initialized as soon as your Python uh, library is actually called by a user. So when they do something like import label mapper, this is gonna be the first file that it encounters when it is imported. Now the role of this file is to function as this first step. When your library is imported, it needs to know what to actually import for the user. This is where we tell the user, or tell um, essentially the, the Python what we want to provide to the user. Now our goal is to provide the user with the functions and the classes that are in our main Python file. And so in this init file, we can say from, sorry, import uh, dot, so from the same directory, component, the file that the classes are found in, and we want to import specifically, um, sorry, from component, import, and we want to import specifically the classes and functions that are found in this file. Now for me, the name of my class is label fixer. Now again, Python is case sensitive, so make sure that you have that. Once you have that set up in this particular format, that's all you need to have for your init file. Automatically, what's going to happen when your library is called, this file will trigger this, and it will go ahead and go into your main Python file here, in this case, component.py, and automatically provide the user all of this code 
and specifically give them access to the classes and functions that you specify. Once you've done this, you can test to make sure that this works. Now, one way in which you can do this is you can use something like a Jupyter Notebook, for example. So instead of importing this particular component file, we can say from label mapper, import label fixer. And we can execute this exact same um, section of code just as we did before, and it'll run the exact same way, which tells us that our library is structured correctly. And we notice that everything works as expected. Once we have our main directory set up the way we needed to, meaning we have our init.py file set up correctly and our actual Python file that contains all of our code, it comes time to actually set up the setup file. The setup file is gonna be the main file that you load up onto PyPy. It needs to be structured in a very systematic way. Now, there are a lot of things that you can include in your setup.py file. What I'm providing for you here is just a very rough a collection of not necessarily the essentials, but the things that I would typically view as mandatory. Some of these are, however, optional. The very first thing that we want to do is we wanna import the necessary things. So we can say from setup tools, we're gonna to import setup. We're also gonna import find packages. Find packages is a very important function that essentially goes through and finds all of the init.py files no matter which directory they sit in, as long as they're in a subdirectory of your main project, it'll find all of them and automatically bring them in and package everything for you automatically so that you don't have to do all of these steps man uh, manually. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to call setup. And what setup is going to take is a series of arguments. Now here I have some of the ones that I would view as standard, but some of these are in fact optional. Now the very first thing is gonna be mandatory and that's gonna be the name. This is going to be the name that somebody uses to install something. So if it's label underscore mapper, somebody will install it from PyPy with pip install label dash mapper. Uh, the next thing that's mandatory is the version. Now this is very important. On PyPy, uh, every single package name can only ever have one version of the same type. This means that there is only ever one instance of label mapper version 001. So it's important to start very low here and iterate up however you see fit. You can start off with three or of these or just simply one. Always start off with version one here. The next bit here is packages. This is gonna be set equal to find packages, which again, will go through all of your subdirectories here and find all of your init files and load everything up automatically for you. The next thing that you need is the install requires. Install under re requires functions kind of like your requirements.txt file. It's gonna be where you list all of the different packages that your Python library depends upon. In this case, we only need to make sure that the user has spacey version 3.0 or higher installed. And so inside of this list, we have a sequence of strings. These strings will point to a very specific library and version if necessary. The other thing that we have here are really things that give some indication about who you are, what the, the library is actually supposed to do, and some guidance on how to use it. So I've got four things here. Again, I view these as something that you should probably have. Um, it helps give users a sense of what this library is supposed to do. I've got my name so people know who I am. I also have a, a brief, small description here, usually just a few sentences. In this case, I'm not using this library. This is a, a Python function that'll be wrapped up in something else I'm working on. And then I have a long description. A long description here is gonna take a, a rather unconventional argument. It's not gonna be a long string. I like to use this because this opens up a readme file. It means that I can ensure that both the GitHub account or GitHub uh, repository where this data will sit and the pypy.org will all align with the exact same readme. What this bit of code does is it opens up the readme file and which is a markdown file that explains essentially how to use it, how to install it, uh, essentially a lot about what this project actually is. It goes ahead and it opens it up, reads it, and loads it up as a long description automatically. And then finally, I specify long description content type. This clarifies how this content should be read. In this case, it's a markdown file, which has its own particular syntax, and this tells it to essentially read it as a markdown file. So once we have all of that, we're able to then go ahead and move on to step four, which is installing a library called Twine. So if we run pip install Twine, we can go ahead and install Twine into our 
uh, into our environment or into whatever we're actually working with. Here in this case, this is my uh, root uh, Python directory on Conda. Once we have Twine installed, we can go ahead and actually upload it to pypy.org. And we can do that by using the command, uh, two separate commands here. First, we need to package our library and then we can actually upload it on to pypy. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to run python setup.py and sdist. This is going to create a distribution folder automatically, a dist folder for you automatically right here, which is where your tar.gz file will actually sit. This is a compressed file that contains all of the data, all of the package that you want to upload on to pypy.org. It'll handle the creation of this for you automatically. Once this is created, it comes time to actually upload it. And we can do this with twine by saying twine space upload, and we can specify that we want to upload everything that sits in the dist folder by saying dist slash uh, asterisk, and this will upload everything automatically for us. Once we do that, we have two things that we can enter in. The first is our username, and the second is gonna be our password, which I'm typing in right now. And if everything works correctly, it'll upload automatically. It's already done. This is a very small package, and we see that it's uploaded right here. And if we click on this link, we'll notice everything is now uploaded correctly. And this is when it comes to the fun part. We can actually test to make sure that we've done everything as we would expect. We can run pip install, um, pip install in this case, label dash mapper. So normally what I would do is I would create a fresh environment, but if we don't want to, we just wanna run pip install label mapper. I think my base environment is actually a little corrupted at the moment, but it's downloading everything. It's loading everything up correctly. Maybe it'll work actually just fine on this on this computer, we'll see. And everything's installed correctly. So at this point, I can run pip show label dash mapper, and I can just make sure that it's been installed correctly. And within a few seconds, we'll see that it actually has. And we can see the summary right here. We can see my name right here. We can see where what version it's on, and we can see its name. And that's how you go ahead and create a Python library from scratch and upload it onto pypy.org. If you follow these five steps, you'll be able to do the same thing with your own project. Again, this is just a simple toy example of something that you can do, but if you have an idea for something that you would like to contribute, go ahead and follow these steps with your own package and upload it. And once you have, link it down below so others can see and follow along. As always, thank you so much to everyone who supports this channel. If you get a lot out of it, I do all this for free. Feel free to support it either via Patreon or via YouTube membership, both of which are linked in the description down below.